Aloha and welcome back to Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, we're doing part two of my Unbreak Your Body series, where you will learn all the best stretches and exercises to improve comfort, flexibility, and strength in your hips. You will also learn how performing these simple exercises will help improve your balance, sports performance, and even decrease pain in your knee and your back. Let me welcome my guest, Joan Linders, to Think Tech Hawaii, Movement Matters. Welcome, Joan. Oh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> Glad to be here. So this is great. I'm so grateful to have you on the show today um, because I flew out to see you in Connecticut from Hawaii last December, about 10 months ago, because you were saying that you were concerned you were having so much hip pain and you live in a I guess a three-story place. So to go upstairs or to go downstairs, you weren't able to bear weight on your leg and you were worried that you had a fracture due to your age. So could, do you remember about I that? Did. Can you tell us about that, your symptoms? Yes, uh, I, I have to uh, two-step it down, uh, uh, lead with the left and then bring the right down. And uh, so I I wasn't sure what was going on. I, I was going to get a, an X-ray and then you showed me uh, exercises. So I've been doing the exercises and I, I feel that it's improving. So I'm not, not concerned about getting an x-ray anymore. So, um, you know, I, uh, I've done a lot of what you told me to do and using the band above my ankles and the slides, you know, I, I do my exercise on the bed rather than on the floor. It's much easier at that, you know, and that surface, let's say. <laughs> yes, and I know that nobody knows your age, so I won't tell them, but I know that in your age range, one of the concerns is a fracture from osteoporosis. And I know your mom had that happen. She was just standing and felt like someone kicked her, but her bone broke and then she fell. And I know that her bone density tests were were negative even though after it broke they saw that the bone was so brittle and that can happen sometimes so that was my concern when i flew out last december and i remember mm -hmm. you had so much trouble bearing weight to step on it or to get up off the sofa and i massaged out that it band on the side and then we did oh, those yes. exercises right well i know that was like kind of painful huh how'd that feel <laughs> painful <laughs> <laughs> but it loosened it up how did <laughs> it, it feel my after? Well, my yelling. <laughs> well, wait, tell everybody how it felt after I was done. Oh, after, yes. I, it felt like it was eased up. Uh, uh, the muscle was so tight, apparently, and I didn't realize that. Uh, but you told me that I could also uh, massage that area, then dig deep uh, mm -hmm. myself also. It's not, yeah. as, uh, not as effective as you do it. But <laughs> but still, you know, it's a thing I can do. That's great. And, and that's uh, one of the, that's one of the things I like to tell people because when patients come in the clinic, often I tell them, Hey, did you massage it? Did you ice it? What did you do? And they're like, no, can I, I'm so used to massaging myself because I've been injured at such a young age and I'm a physical therapist that I, I, I want to teach you all my patients, family, friends, etc." what to do at home. And then I kind of make you an honorary physical therapist. So, Hey, it's okay to massage this muscle. Why that muscle got tight is you had some abnormal movement, which we'll see in a few minutes that was making that muscle tight and creating a huge amount of strain on your hip, not the hips fault, but the biomechanics that were altered that gave you that problem. And so a lot of times I tell people when I'm massaging, I'm like, that hurts, that hurts. I'm, I didn't do that to you. I'm trying to undo it for you. Like your mechanics right. have let this muscle to be painful. You didn't even know that muscle was painful because the muscle wasn't where your pain was when you were moving. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, so, you know, I've been doing the bridges and, and I could feel that the, the muscle is uh, being worked. When I do the bridges, I could feel the, the tightness and also, you have me using ankle weights, and I, I really feel that the, the softness of the muscle is getting firmer, yeah. if that's the way to put it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. let's, I know everybody watching wants to know what your leg looked like. Let's go to video number two, which is a clip from our prior show on how to solve knee pain to learn a little bit more. So let's look at image number six, 
which is an image of my mom, who I always joke with her about her crooked knee. But what happened with her knee, she did injure her knee when she was young. She fell on, I think, some glass or a pile of rocks. But also the thing that I've been harping on her for 15 years probably, is that she walks with her right foot turned out, always. I take videos of her every time I see her. Turn your foot straight, mom. Turn your foot straight, mom. Turn your foot straight when you go up and down the stairs. And she mentions that every time she does turn her foot straight, her knee doesn't hurt when she goes up and down the stairs. And why that happens is like I explained before, if your foot is out, it takes your tibia and puts it in a different position and it twists at your knee because you're going forward. It's a complicated biomechanics, but the important thing to take home is you can even see her foot's turned out just ever so slightly, but look at that bending in her knee. That's that sideways angle I was telling you about, the crooked knee. And she has terrible knee arthritis and knee pain. And of course she does because she's been having abnormal wear and tear, that rotational twisting every, every, every step she takes as she goes forward about her day, as she does her gardening, as she walks around an uneven yard. And now let me point out the pelvis. If you can see up at her pelvis, she's got that wrinkle and her shoulders are completely angled down to the leg that she's not standing on. And that is because her gluteus medius on that right side is not stabilizing her pelvis. So not only is her foot out, but her hip is dropping, causing her femur to rotate inward. So her knee is literally getting twisted every step that she takes over and over and over again, leading to that collapse at her knee. The gluteus medius is one of my favorite muscles to strengthen. And the reason why is because during function, it moves your leg mostly, uh, what, sorry, not during function, during action, if you were just gonna say gluteus medius fire, it would move your leg mostly just to the side. It also moves it backwards and a little bit rotation to the side as well. Those are its secondary and its third actions. But during function, when you are walking, that gluteus medius stabilizes your pelvis and your spine on your leg. So here's your leg, here's your pelvis. You can kind of see it behind me. There's your pelvis, there's where your legs come down. Your gluteus medius, when you stand on one leg, stabilizes the pelvis like this. And you can see in Joan's photo that her pelvis was dropped and that is because her gluteus medius wasn't functioning. Now, I've done many shows on these alignment issues and the foot out and the knee in and all that. And so Joan's situation is a little more complicated because when the foot is turned out, it doesn't set off what we therapists call a chain reaction that would allow the lower leg bones to move and trigger the brain to fire the gluteus medius to stabilize the pelvis and your low back on top of the femur, your thigh bone, because the leg is already collapsed. When your foot is straight and it pronates, it sets off that chain reaction and a message gets sent to your gluteus medius and it fires and it stabilizes your pelvis on your leg. And so that was what Joan was saying, the band around her ankles exercise, which you'll learn in a little bit to help stabilize. So mom, when you look at that photo, what are you thinking? Because that was last December when I came out to see you and your knee hurts. I'm not even talking about your knee right now, but your knee pain is, is a huge problem. We're talking about hip today, but when you see that photo, what do you think? I can't believe the angle that it's at. <laughs> You know, you, you can't see yourself, but when you see a picture like that, uh, you need some improvement. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. So a lot of people need flexibility in the hips, uh, people that have osteoarthritis, or maybe they've had a labral tear and an injury, and then the muscles in the area tend to get tight. So while someone's in my first session, I go through flexibility, strengthening, and homework. I want to share with the audience today one of the first steps is uh, in video number three. Let's look at some flexibility. These are great ways to gain some flexibility in your hips. So you can lay on your back to do most of them. And you are going to grab one knee, clasp your hands behind to start gaining some hamstring flexibility, and try to kick your legs straight. I usually do 10 times each side. Don't be alarmed if it only goes this far but you need adequate length in your hamstrings to have healthy hips, 10 times each leg. Another one is the knee to opposite chest stretch. So you grab one knee and you line it up with your opposite shoulder. So you kind of have this number four position. You put one hand here, one hand here, and you hug it gently 
up and breathe. There should be no pinching in your hip. If there is, you just stay loose and just gently oscillate that on one leg. Then you can line your knee up with your opposite shoulder so the foot falls just out, outside of that thigh. Hug your knee up to your opposite shoulder. That stretches out all those glute muscles that could be tight, creating more pressure on the front of your hip joint. The next one, you're gonna put your feet very wide and your knees close up to your hips. And then you're gonna let your knees drop off to one side. You'll probably feel a nice stretch in here. There shouldn't be pain, just some tightness. And then you're gonna go to the other side. You can breathe and stretch. If you have pain, you can kind of do what you see me doing with my hands. Help your legs over to support them and stretch, let that stretch out. Help to support, let those deep hip rotators get stretched out so you can get some mobility in your hips. Now another common muscle that gets tight is the front of your hips. So you can scoot your bum over to the edge of the bed, hug one knee to your chest first to protect your back, and then drop the other leg off the edge to feel a nice deep hip flexor stretch. If you've been stooped over or you've caught yourself slouching for 20 years over your desk or you drive a lot, these muscles can get tight. But you can also do it in standing. So if you just put your, your foot up on a surface, you can lunge forward, suck your stomach in to protect your back, tuck your buttock under and you can get a nice hip flexor stretch here. You can hold onto a surface, reach your hand up and allow those hip muscles to stretch. Enjoy. So Joan, uh, are any of those stretches familiar? Yes, uh, especially um, in, the, in the very beginning. And as I wake up, before I get out of bed to stretch, to uh, do the stretch, um, I I put my hand behind my knee mm -hmm. so that I'm not pulling on my knee in particular because you know <laughs> I um, and then the the leg up to the sky up to the ceiling and uh, do my ankle twist, but that seems to stretch out my back, which um, gets tight overnight. So I, I like that a lot. I'm glad you yeah. mentioned your back because in my show description, I talk about how strengthening your hip and improving flexibility in your hip can really help decrease low back pain and even knee pain. And that is something that in your picture that everybody looked at in the beginning, you could see that drop. And what happens when here's your leg, here's your pelvis, you get that drop is you get a bending of the spine. It's almost like visible on this skeleton right yes. here you can see yes. this pelvis is higher than there and there's that bending that's very similar now this is the gluteus medius that's the weak side right over here and when the pelvis drops like that the spine bends and all these muscles here get short and tight and all these muscles get strained but worse on this side is a space around the nerves the canals gets more narrow when your spine is bending to that side and it leaves you open to get nerve pain or compression down your leg and when i was just visiting you joan in uh last week i was there it was great <laughs> i remember we were sitting on the sofa and i was trying to shove a pillow under your butt and you were saying oh yeah my thigh is is hurting and my the the hip area and that's just part of the problem with this bending here yes yes you put it under one side so i was you know more straight rather than yeah. having that curve yeah, and that, yeah. that's just like some strategy you can do. Um, my mom and I have scoliosis, so this is a contributor to having the sitting problem and getting more compression. But the same thing holds true in someone that has the normal straight spine and this hip is weak. So every step you take, let's say you're doing 10,000 steps a day, walking up and down stairs, every step you take, your pelvis is dropping, 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 because the gluteus medius is not stabilizing you there. and you're not only at risk for a crooked knee or knee pain or osteoarthritis, but getting spinal compression and, and back pain or tightness, like you were saying, in your back. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. let's say you don't have, you have hip arthritis, but you don't really have a, a stiff hip per se. Let's go to video number yeah. four, where we look at one of my favorite exercises to do if someone has a very stiff arthritic hip and they have trouble getting in and out of the car, bending enough to sit on the toilet seat. Let's check out video four. 
you have hip arthritis or an immobile hip where you just are having trouble bending it to get in and out of the car or it's painful sitting in a chair, do this exercise. This exercise is great for recreating the position of your femoral head in the pelvis, which is where your hip sits in the socket. So you're gonna get on your hands and knees. You can be on the bed, on the floor, hands and knees like this. The important thing is that you don't round your back because that's keeping the femoral head forward in the hip socket and it's pinching on the tissues, which is giving you hip pain. It's putting it's the ball on the socket in the wrong spot and creating more wear and more pain. You want to drop your, sway your back like a horse, suck your stomach in to protect your spine and move your butt backward. It's okay if it's an inch, that's fine. What you were doing, are you stretching out the posterior hip structures to allow that ball to sit back in the socket where it belongs instead of forward on a different spot that's causing more degeneration to the joint and more pinching on these structures giving you pain. It's okay if you can go back far, that's great, but not far enough so your back rounds. Only tailbone to the sky, sit back. I usually do 20 times just to help stretch that. Most of the time it feels like you're doing nothing except for when you get to a point you might be like, ooh, there's a pinch, that's okay. Go to the pinch once and then come back. And then you stay above the pinch and you help restore the joint mechanics of your hip. Enjoy that one. What do you think of that one, Joan? I'd like to try that. Is it okay if I try it on the bed though? Yeah, it is, it is. I worry about that one because of your, your knee, but definitely go on the bed so you're on a soft surface. And especially you yeah. with uh, the back pain and having a scoliosis curve, that that exercise, the way I perform it, I've kind of tweaked it when I learned it from someone in the past is for alignment. I feel like what happens, like I explained in the videos, is it stretches out those posterior hip structures so the head of the femur of your thigh bone can sit back in the pelvis where it needs to be instead of pushing more forward for people that have that anterior hip pain or that pinch or a very stiff stiff arthritic hip. So I'd love for you to try that. But what you might need to do yeah. is when you're on your hands and knees, you might need to look down through your legs to make sure that your feet are here. Cause you might find with the, with the knee, you might find that your leg is like out like that and you might need to just adjust it. So you don't like twitch your knee as you sit back. Okay. But don't forget right. to suck your stomach in too, when you do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Suck it in. <laughs> suck it in. The stabilizer is fine. I think I gave dad yeah. that one in the past for his spine just to help align it. And I've given it to so many younger and older hip arthritis people. And when I say younger, I mean, people in their late forties, sometimes people have a hip injury or something happens when they're younger that they get that degeneration or the positioning is poor in the socket and they get early arthritis. That one works mm -hmm. great to get people to function and do what they want to do without having that painful hip pinch that makes you want to live. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to try it. Okay, I great. I can't wait yeah. to hear how you do. So the next video is something that I go through and I think everyone should really pay attention to. And it's when I look at someone and how they stand and how they squat, similar to that picture that I showed of you in the beginning, Joan, I look at the alignment of the pelvis, the alignment of the thigh, the knee, the lower leg. And it's really important to understand the alignment, if you have hip pain, knee pain, back pain, and you want to learn how to correct it, I'm correcting it right now in someone who's in her 70s. She's an active triathlete. She's playing pickleball. She injured her hip, and we have been looking in the mirror, trying to teach her brain that this limping is not right and the way to move properly. So let's go to video number one to learn about alignment. To have a healthy hip or get rid of your hip pain, you have to learn about proper alignment. So one of the biggest things I see when someone comes into the clinic is they're walking when they stand and their hip is dropping like this, or they're walking and they walk over the hip like this, over the painful leg. Why that's bad is when you move that way, there's a very vital hip muscle, your gluteus medius, that will not fire because your brain doesn't get the message when you shift your weight onto it. And that's one critical muscle to help stabilize your hip joint. So what you wanna do if you're at home and you can look in the mirror is you wanna look in the mirror here and pick up one leg and see what happens. It's okay to hold onto a surface if you don't have balance, but you see what happens. You use a line, like maybe your shirt line here, 
to see if when you stand you're here to see if that happens or to see if that happens on your hip. So that's one critical thing that you need to look at. And how you fix it is actually pretty simple once you can learn it. So you can, if you have the hip drop, you can lift the other leg up like this, like you're trying to hike the opposite hip up. If you do about 20 of those, you're gonna feel it burning in that standing leg's hip. That's a great way. If you're leaning over this way, when you pick up your leg, you practice shifting your weight over to that hip and then lifting the other leg and you look at your trunk to make sure you're not leaning over this way. Load that hip muscle, give the brain the message to fire your gluteus medius, then pick up the other leg. Again, I don't care if you use a finger to hold on, it's all about balance. But to get rid of your hip pain, you need to help restore your alignment. Enjoy. Now, mom, uh, have I gone through that with you? I know I was just home last week and we didn't do that, but does no. that look familiar? Yes, but not that particular ex exercise, but when I go for a walk, you, you told me to, uh, yeah, even if I put my hands on my hips to make sure I feel the rock rocking, not just on one side, uh, because I used to not pay attention, but I do pay attention now, make sure I got that like a little wiggle going on. And if I, just to test it, I'll put my hands on my hips to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And that helps. That's a good, so, I like the word choice that you're using is the pay attention. I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things that I'm so proud of you and all of my patients for learning is the paying attention to your body. And that's why I go through all these fine details in all my videos and, and instructions with my patients is I am, I've been told over the last 15 years, that I'm very, I'm an expert at picking out the little finest detail, the nitpicky thing, but often the nitpicky thing is the thing that's leading to your pain, not the glaring, huge problem that you just see on the surface. And so you paying attention to how you move, movement matters, that's the name of the it show. Does is enabling you to shift your weight, like you said, the wiggle, to shift your hips, your pelvis side to side to give your brain the message to fire that gluteus medius, especially on the leg that dives in, to stabilize your pelvis so you don't hurt your back. So that's great. I need to do my show. I need to say life is better when you pay attention to pay your attention. physical therapist instead of <laughs> listening to your physical therapist. But that's not what that person said. They said, listen, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So when I go for the walk, I'm checking my right foot that is not winging out and and paying attention to what the hips are doing. Excellent. Excellent. So, so I love it. And now let's go to what everyone wants to know right now is how do you perform these strengthening exercises? I am going to give you the best, the simplest right now in video number six. This exercise is fantastic for getting at these tiny little deep hip rotators. So if you have a labral tear or if you have just deep, deep, deep hip pain that you can't find a way to get to, or if you're working with a physical therapist or a massage therapist, they can't get to it, this exercise is fantastic. So I have a very particular way I designed doing it when I had injured my hip a long time ago. So you're gonna lay on your side. If you're at home, you wanna get so that your legs are about eight inches, your thigh off the bed. And then you're gonna line your two knees up as if someone drove a spike right between the central axis of your knees. The bottom leg, you're gonna bend it out of the way. And the top leg, you're gonna be bending at 90 degrees at your knee. And you're gonna go from horizontal or parallel to the floor. And you're gonna drop that leg slowly down and back up. Drop that leg slowly down and back up. You don't wanna straighten your knee, you wanna keep it 90 degrees drop it slowly down and you also don't want to lift it very high because if you have hip arthritis this motion can be painful so you can go maybe a little bit above the parallel but you're going to do that 20 or 30 reps you don't need a weight you don't need a band just do enough until you can feel it deep in your hip now if you want to work the other direction or the other hip you bend the top leg back drop the bottom leg off again 90 degrees not out here right at the l shape and you drop that one down and up towards the ceiling down and up towards the ceiling. And if you wanna do the other side, you just lay on your other side on the bed. And that is great to help work those deep hip rotators that I call the hip rotator cuff.
We only have a few okay. minutes left, so I'm going to go straight to video number five to show more strengthening. These exercises are the best to begin strengthening the important muscles that stabilize your hip and control the position of your leg while you're walking. So you'll need an exercise band. You can get them anywhere on Amazon. You can get them online. Get them from a physical therapy clinic. You're going to put the band around your ankles and you're going to begin to isolate the gluteus medius muscle. That is the most important muscle to stabilize your hip in the pelvis while you're on your legs standing or walking. So you are going to lay on a surface. You're going to pull your toes up. You're going to squeeze your buns tight. You're going to push your legs down into the surface and slide them apart. The reason why I say press down is because if you lift, you work this tiny muscle up here. You don't want that. That's not going to help your hip. You're going to squeeze your buns, push your calves down, slide your legs apart. You're going to do 10 times. That keeps your pelvis stable. It's great for people with low back pain, hip pain, knee pain, you name it. Then you're gonna start isolating one leg. You're gonna pull your toes up, squeeze your bun tight, press your right leg down, your left leg down, slide your right leg apart. Do not lift it. Push down and slide. You're gonna do 10 on the right. When you're done with 10 on the right, you're gonna push down with both legs, slide your left. Isolate those muscles. Now you're gonna start working your hip rotators, your gluteus maximus and your deep hip rotators. We're gonna combine them with this exercise. Band above your knees, you're going to suck your stomach in to protect your back, lift your buns up in the air all as one unit, and you're going to open your knees 10 times to work those rotators, and then come down. Suck your stomach in, lift, open. Sometimes I'll go 10 times here, come down. Other times I'll go up, out, in, down, up, out, in, down, and you will get a great glute burn to your largest hip muscle as well as your tiny rotators and your deep core. Now we're going to start working what I call, and probably many others, the hip rotator cups. You're going to lay on your side with the band above your knees, and there's four different ways. So here the hips and the knees are bent, your feet are together, you're going to lift up. You're not going to rotate your whole body back. You're only going to lift your knee up so your body stays the same. You're going to do 10. After 10, you're going to keep your knees apart. You're going to tap your foot from parallel to the foot, parallel to the foot for 10 times. Now to get the other set of the deep rotators, you're gonna make yourself in a straight line with your knees bent, and you're gonna open your knees again. 10 times, after 10, you're gonna keep your knees apart, lift your foot 10 times. Very important to get all the hip rotators. You can also do, if you're advanced, sideline, but do not go forward and up. You need to go back and up to get your gluteus medius, and you gotta be careful that you don't use your waist muscles you want to keep your leg long and reaching out and then lift up it's not very far to exercise that muscle another one of my favorites that helped me with my hip people that have labral tears or osteoarthritis of the hip is if you get on the side of your bed or a table and you get your knees off about six inches and you put you don't need the band i just gonna leave it there you put your knees together like a, a spike was drilled between the two 90 degrees at your hip 90 degrees at your knee and you're going to drop that top leg down and back up to horizontal down back up to horizontal that is a fantastic exercise to work the deep hip rotators there shouldn't be pain but you'll feel it somewhere in there it is great now to switch you're going to take the top leg and put it back and bring the bottom leg forward and now you're going to move it a little bit down but again you don't want to drop this foot all the way down because it could pinch in your hip so you're just going to move it an inch down then you're going to move it up, inch down, move it up, inch down, move it up to get all those really tiny hip rotator muscles so that you can rescue your hip and enjoy your life. Joan, we are out of time. I expect that you'll be performing some of those exercises, but I know that that one yes. on your back with the band around your ankles is the one that you did. Yes, and I'll, I'll do some more of those. Um, you know, working the, the band up a little higher uh, around, you know, and then the knees, moving the knees. So I'm going to try it. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on. You've been a joy. And thank you everyone for joining us. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Aloha, everyone.